So this is going to be a pretty exciting video because after weeks of talking about it, I'm finally going to digipeat a packet off the ISS. So if you're not familiar, the, the ISS or the space station has a ham radio on board, which also has APRS packet functionality. APRS packet is a digital protocol for ham radio, or actually AX25 is a digital protocol for ham radio. APRS is built on top of that and it allows you to send messages to other users as well as beacon your uh, geographical location to others. Well, the ISS has a system on board that receives these digital radio packets and then retransmits them back to Earth. Internet gateway stations on Earth are listening on the frequency that the ISS transmits on and if it receives those packets it will upload them to the internet for the world to see. So if you're familiar with APRS it's basically the same premise except we're going to need one little tweak. And today we're going to be digipeating a packet with the FT3D. So, what I recommend is you first go over and watch my APRS video on the FT3D, which I'll link here below. And it's going to tell you everything about APRS functionality on the FT3D radio. Next, we're going to need to tweak one setting. So, without getting into the specifics on how APRS works, basically there's a parameter called path. And it basically tells the digipeter how to digipete the packet and if to digipete. Well, what makes the ISS digipeter different from the Earth ones is it has a special path that is, a I'll put it on the screen, it's A-R-I-S-S. So this path must be in your APRS packet in order to be digipeted off the ISS. Furthermore, if you'd like your pack to be digipeted after it gets back down to Earth, which increases the chances of it um, getting into an internet gateway, you can also add a wide path, which will be on the screen. So you need to make sure that these paths are in your radio before you start, otherwise this is going to be in vain. So if you go into your radio and hold in the display button, and then go to APRS, and option 18 there's something called DigiPath. You'll click on that, and this has preset paths available, but you will have to put in a path of your own that looks like this. So there we have the ARSS uh, path which means that it will be digipeded by the ISS and then here we have our wide 2-1 which means that basically when it gets back to earth it'll be digipeted again just to make sure we get inside of those um, gateways. So you will need to make sure that you have this. If you don't you can edit your own path and put it in here or you can do it on the computer like I said. But you need to make sure that your path has ARSS wide 2 1 and it is currently set to that. Next, to make sure we're completely ready, let's go ahead and enable APRS functionality. Again, I'm not going to get into the specifics on how to do this because I've already covered this in an in depth video. But we want to make sure that our APRS modem is on at 1200 BPS. We also need to make sure that our GPS power is on as well. And once more for good measure, I'll make sure that my DigiPath is set up correctly. And we should be ready to rock and roll. Now, before we get started, it's good to be prepared for this since there's a small window. So you want to make sure that you know how to manually transmit your beacon. So I'm going to hit the function menu. And as you can see on the first window, there's a beacon text, a TX. Once you hit that, you should TX the beacon more than likely on your bottom frequency. That brings me to my second point. We need to have the ISS Digipeter programmed into a radio. So you don't need it programmed, but you need to have the frequency there and make sure it's set in the right mode. So the ISS Digipack digital uh, frequency is 145.825. So once I'm set here, I should be able to hit this and hit Beacon TX. And as you can see, I just transmitted the beacon. Of course, the digipeter is not running and the, the pass isn't going over, so I didn't receive anything. But ideally, once the ISS goes over, we'll start hearing APRS beacons, we'll start seeing messages and statuses on the screen, and we should be able to hit this button and hit Beacon TX and hopefully hear our packet back from the ISS. If you watch my video all about working ham radio satellites, you know how to track the satellites in the ISS. But this is going to be a one-off video, so I'm going to tell you how I do it. And you're going to need a cell phone. I was reaching for my cell phone, but then I remembered I'm filming with it, so that's not going to work. So there is an application on the App Store for Android called Heavens Above. 
There's also uh, ISS tracking apps on the Apple uh, iStore, whatever it's called. So those apps will allow you to see the passes of the ISS. If you don't have a cell phone or you don't have access to those apps, I'll provide a link for a website that will also show you the same thing. The important part is we're looking for a pass in your area for the ISS with an elevation that goes as close to above you as possible. If it's going at an angle over the horizon, there's a chance you might be able to get some packets, but there's also a good chance you won't. Your highest rate of success is going to be a pass that is right overhead. And that's exactly what we got coming up in an hour. And that's why I'm filming this video. So check out those websites. And the average pass takes about 15 minutes to go over. So you have 15 minutes to get what you need done. So make sure you have all your equipment ready beforehand. Take 15, 20 minutes, whatever it takes. Because if you have ever worked satellites before, you know that things go wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and head out to the site here of where I'm going to be doing this. Make sure I got everything ready. And you just want to make sure that you have all of your material ready to go before you start. Now, my main goal of this video is just to get a packet up there and get a packet back. So let's go ahead and get out there and get started. While I love doing satellite work, living in an apartment uh, next to an interstate, it makes it pretty hard to do anything. So I have to drive to the park, and uh, right now with the pandemic, there's a lot of people. So I found a nice little location on the side of the park, and uh, we're going to try to film up on the hill. And while I like doing, I like spreading the word about ham radio, I find a lot of times during satellite work, it's nice to find somewhere quiet and away from people, because people like to stop and stare, and then they like try to start talking to you and asking questions while you're in the middle of the pass, and... It's just a little inconvenient when it comes to satellite work. So I'm going to go up on this hill here and uh, set up my equipment and hope that nobody approaches me. All right, so it looks like the pass is about to start. And unfortunately, I realized I didn't bring a watch. So I'll have to use my phone for time. And I guess we can use it to uh, get the azimuth of the ISS as well. So I'm going to re rely completely on the GoPro video. So hopefully that doesn't bite me in the butt. But looks like the ISS is just about to come over. So I'm going to make sure that the squelch is as low as it can be. Because we can't transmit if it's on. And the antenna is properly in there. The arrow is nice and tight. And hopefully here in a couple minutes we'll start hearing some packets. And we'll have to adjust the... Um, the arrow uh, polarization to tune in to the right uh, frequency but once you hear a first packet I'm gonna look down and make sure that the camera is still recording properly and uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll oh there's our first packet all right so looks like it's coming over Good sign, good sign. So I didn't actually decode that, but I did hear it. Now we just got to find the polarization here. And periodically I'm rotating the antenna and then beaconing. To see if I hear the satellite. Of course, our Heavens Above app here has already started malfunctioning. Well, I heard that one and my antenna was pointed down. So good sign, good sign. Let's we'll see if we can get it up in here, packet. All right, we're hearing them. We're just not decoding them. I'm going to make sure my modem is on. They're just a little too unclear to decipher right now. That's okay. It's still the beginning of the past. We're almost... Almost there. We should be decoding them any time now. Just the signal's a little hairy. Oh, there we go. There's our first packet. So if you can't see the screen, it's a K4DR-6 is the second packet. All right, we have you heard via ISS in Virginia? Okay, we're getting packets in like crazy now. So let's see if we can get ours in. Oh, so we got a message from the space station. KD5DNA. 
Yeah, we're getting all kinds of packets. This is a good pass, good pass. Now, the important part is we make sure that we get our packet up there. And we're just changing polarization here. All right, sounds like it's moving a little bit. Now I'm gonna check the messages here and see if we still getting a lot of messages. I think some people are actually trying to make a QSL with us, but I am in no state to do that right now. Just wanna get our message up there. We're getting all kinds of beacons here. And let's check our time here. So our 10 minutes of fame have almost ran up. <clears throat> so we'll see what we can do while we still got it running here. So that's pretty much our 10 minutes of fame. Next step we're gonna do is I'm gonna go home, out of the sun, away from people. We're gonna look at the radio and see what messages we decoded, see if there's indi any indicators that we got a packet digipeded. And then we're gonna check online because there's services that show what packets are digipeded by the ISS. So let's go home and just take in that information and see what we can find. All right, so first let's take a look and see what messages we received. So we'll go to the message list here. And start from the top. Heard you via ISS. I think that's to me, but if we hit this, we can hit raw. And it'll show us, yeah. So he actually sent it to me, so that means that he heard me and he was letting me know. Here, uh, it, oh, okay, so that's the only direct message that we've had. So we did have that, and we can actually view the station list as well. And these are all of the stations that we've heard. So, K4, KDR, K5DNA, RS0 ISS, so that's the ISS right there. So that's the packet that we received from the ISS. Cool stuff, and we can see the raw uh, packet data for that too. Pretty much the same stuff. We also received one from a KB4 DSF, N1 RCN, and yeah, so it looks like it was successful. We received the message from another individual, and they heard us. So now let's see if we made it into one of those internet gateways. So ARISS.net is a website that pretty much shows the last heard stations via the ISS. So as we can see here in Kentucky, there we are, KN4MKB-7. We were heard there. And if we scroll down here, we can see the list. MK, there we go. So there we are. There's our packet. And it shows our position here. There is our message right here, hello from space. So, looks like it was successful. All right, so that pretty much sums up the video. I know a lot of my subscribers have been asking for this type of content, so I'm glad I finally got it. I'm pretty happy with the way it went. Next time, we're gonna try to make a QSO over the ISS, so maybe that individual that replied to me, I could reply to my grid square, and that would've made a two-way contact with that guy. But we did get a two-way contact with the ISS, the space station. Super cool. It's always really fun to do that, and it's a really cool aspect of the hobby. But uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and beg, but everybody have a good day. 73 to you.